Welcome to Foodcast. I'm your host, Rick. And today we have here Thomas, the Garlic Deep Guide. Welcome to Foodcast, Thomas. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Hey guys. Let's start first. We got a wine here, nice Dada number eight. How you got the idea for the, the guide? Uh, it's very strange. Like when it was in February of 2020, so like a month before obviously the whole world ended with COVID. And um, I got a job in town and I met a guy there and I was like, oh, it'd be cool like every day to go to somewhere different for lunch. Um, because I've always been like, you know, love trying new places, love trying new things and stuff like that. Um, and I was like, oh, it'd be cool if someone raided like where we went and I was like you know I'm a huge fan of Garlic Dip obviously and, and like he was as well as most people, Irish people are and uh, we said oh, I'll be cool if we went to all these places and reviewed specifically just a Garlic Dip and he was like that's such a good idea and um, so I checked I checked on Instagram and um, I knew that would be like the first place to start to see if there was a page made and um, there was like one or two made years ago but they had like one or two posts yeah like maybe it's like a joke or something like that but n nothing ongoing so I quickly just made the name Garlic Dip Guide like I was thinking about the name for a few days made yeah. it as soon as I could get the domain because obviously you know someone else has a domain it's yeah. gone like so quickly made it stopped um, I was like okay I'm going to start posting next thing COVID hits um, everywhere's closed I was like well no one's going to like the page because everywhere's closed like how am I going to try restaurants or bars Like, and then a full year later after that so I've been sitting there with the username I had the account I had like one follower which was myself actually two was my friend and um i was like am i ever gonna start this and obviously covid still kept going on and on and uh valentine's day actually um i was here with my girlfriend and i got um I got base pizza and i was yeah. like that that's a nice garlic dip and i was like you know if i'm gonna start i may as well start now i've already sat on it for a year i have the page like covid's not going away like i've already got loads of takeout as everyone else has so i just put up my first post there on valentine's day 2021 and then since there the rest is, is pretty much history <laughs> wow and then start to fly like that very quick yeah it really picked up traction um like from the start it was just like i think we had like 100 200 followers like they always say the hardest followers to get is your first 1000 and then your next 1000 so once you're 2000 after that just kind of like rolls like a ball like wow um, but at the start it was it's just like relying on mates to share and stuff yeah and yeah and then it's like do i follow everyone back because it only increased my following and followers uh, and then I got an interview with uh, 98 FM. They talked about like the idea for the page. That got me loads of followers. I think I cracked 800 or 1,000 with that. Then did one with Dublin Live. Then I was on Ray Darcy's show um, talking about Garlic Dip. Then it was like, you know, Shara Magazine, District Night. Like there's so many interviews and like, cause the word just spread. And then as it spread, it just got more and more. Do you think you got a grow like that? The name is very catchy. Yeah, it's very good. I really like. I, I, I hands down for that. It's really, yeah. really catchy and nice. Do you think that was part of it as well? Yeah, because I was thinking like, I didn't want to have it too long, but like I'm a kind of a big fan of kind of you know, not not a big fan of alliteration, but it obviously helps that people say mm -hmm. garlic dip guide. Because I was like, if I have those garlic dip reviews, or I, originally I think it was garlic dip guy, but then I was like that. I don't know it kind of sounds a bit, bit strange like um it, you know so once i had the name i was like i want to find something that's catchy because other dom i think other domains there's one like garlic dip love or garlic dips like and i was gonna have it just garlic dip but i was like well it doesn't really say what i'm about which is i'm trying to be a guide yeah to talk about it so that's where i kind of got the idea um and yeah i'm happy it kind of stuck now and that's obviously the only one so <laughs> yeah. you went to the main media and that what were give you the the first push let's like say like that w when you went for the interview in the 98 fm mm -hmm. was this was um I think the exact date is on my page i think it was like kind of the summer of 2021 um wow. and around there and it, it, the funny thing was i actually didn't reach out to places so what i did like sneaky marketing I suppose is like as a small page trying to grow I just followed massive pages like you know all the radio shows like Love and Dublin all the Dublin pages that have hundreds of thousands of followers and just commented on absolutely everything they posted even had nothing to do with food <laughs> like if it did it helped because it would be the same demographic I just yeah. comment on it because then everyone who follows them like you know they might see the comment or like and you kind of just pick up followers from that so because I was following these places and commenting they reached out to me then and asked me I actually didn't ask them 
and then I was thinking, I was like, geez, maybe I should have asked someone, but I kind of felt like even at that stage, I was too small because I think I only had like 400 followers, and I was like, I'm hardly gonna ask for, for an interview, but yeah, uh, once they came to me, then like I think with the other radio shows, like um, uh, another news articles like Dublin Live and Independent and um rt radio they kind of like oh well, we want to do a story about it we want to do a story and like it kind of just like spread around because i'm the only one uh, and obviously people want to get like a unique kind of post out there and to me it was, it was free marketing like there's obviously it didn't pay anything like you know no money but it's getting the name out there yeah yes. and from that i got way more followers that i would have been would have been able to get if i just you know from friends of friends and things like that oh yeah totally understand yeah. i think everyone does uh social media nowadays they can feel that Mm. It's very difficult to grow uh, organically yeah. uh, without a strategy. Mm. And when you get there uh, without that little push, uh, like make such a difference yeah. and put you out, uh, put it in the map. Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, nobody does what you do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, exactly. I, I think it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. What's the main question people normally ask you? Most of my DMs will be filled up with people like telling me to go somewhere and try a dip. But the main question they'd ask me is like, obviously the, the hawkers like, where's the best? Or they'd say like, what what is the best you know thing to try regards if they'd be yeah. the main two um and it obviously can answer again and again and again but i don't mind because like someone might just follow and ask um and then it, like if someone says like have you had this dip i'd refer to the post that i've already reviewed it or if not i'll just be like no i'll add to the list and the list has like 500 tips ready to go <laughs> but, uh, i get asked loads of crazy things um all the time yeah do you believe you are garlic dip so many year as <laughs> yeah, far as i am like it's uh it, it is a weird one like i really found there's a niche for everything and, yeah and like because of this like uh, actually a question i get asked a lot is like w would you not do like more sauces would you not do like ketchup or curry or like yeah. you know but i was thinking like well there's not like they're all kind of the same like like how many different ketchups have you had it's kind of like yeah you know, heinz or chef or, or even curry sauce like obviously every curry places their own but kind of tastes the same you know like unless mm -hmm. we're traveling all over the world that would be much different but i think garlic dip is the only thing that has an appeal where it can be really different depending on where you go and like i just knew when i was younger like i just i'd always get anytime i ordered if it's there i'm just gonna get it and i'd much prefer it to other dips like um so yeah that's what i think i think it's a irish thing garlic yeah. dip if you go to america or even Latin America, like Brazil, you go there and ask for, you get your pizza, where's your garlic dip? Yeah. Here is something you need, is a must. If you don't have your garlic dip with your pizza, it's like, are you selling pizza? Yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. What's your favorite thing to go with the garlic dip? And um, if you want to get like the most unbiased flavor of garlic dip, it has to be breadsticks. So I just get a pack of breadsticks um because there's no contrast in flavor there's no spice there's no consistency it's just yeah. bread dip it in like obviously you can put your finger in but you know you, it yeah, doesn't yeah. do really the same can need to have it on something yeah, yeah. so i just use breadsticks and um, but obviously most of the time like pizza crust is probably another good one because you know depending on what you have in the pizza like if i get like a, you know yeah. a spicy pizza it'll kind of mess up the palate a bit but mm -hmm. at least the, just the crust like as long as that's stuffed that's probably a good too but i like i've obviously dipped in like chips um and then you know like maybe like chicken wings and stuff but like if i'm gonna be honest like i can only bring breadsticks but obviously if i'm going out to a restaurant ordering from a takeaway like i don't bring breadsticks with me <laughs> I, ju I just have to use what they give me you know i have to think on the spot so like it's mostly i just ask for chips um or like you know occasionally i think i've dipped bread into it as well um but yeah no breadsticks would be the best one where, where would be the best garlic dip in in dublin yeah so this you. this is obviously like the, the quest of the page yeah like, yeah i don't know if it's one that can ever be answered because i can only say that i've had every single one but obviously there's so many new places have been coming and places change their recipe before and after reviews as well um but in my opinion there i have a like I'll, i don't have a top i don't have a 10 like i like obviously i rate them out of 10 but i haven't given a 10 out of 10 because i think that defeats the purpose like here's a perfect one yeah i give everything like just as close so i've given a few 9.5s um so in my opinion the the top ones the 9.5s from what i've tried so far obviously that there could be a lot more coming um would be little richards and scaries and um, so it's like a wood-fired pizza place um attached onto like a pub really nice obviously scaries is, is a bit kind of out of the way in dublin it was just beautiful it had like um black truffle in it, it was really thick um you know really strong but like wasn't like overpowering yeah and um, that would be one of them another one just recently i had 
in October is Goat's Gruff. Um, that's very similar, very thick, mm. very strong. Um, a nice blend of flavors, fresh. Um, just you know, it's kind of like cold as well. Um, and then Grilla, which um, I'm not sure you heard of. It's the pink one. So they do like oh, it's pink. Yeah, it's pink. Yeah, and I thought like, oh, what is it like? Is is there like you know beetroot or different vegetables? I don't think so. Like it tastes exactly like a wow. good garlic dip, but it's just pink. Uh, and I thought, oh, it's just like it can't be good. It's just remarkable. It's, lo- it's unbelievable. Like it's really nice. And they do like with the toast season. They have like stores popping up all over the place. They've one on Thomas Street. Do they told you what they put in to turn pink? I can't remember what it was. I, I could be wrong. I think it's beetroot. Yeah. Like, extract, but I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah it, it could it have doesn't been... change the flavor. Yeah. Like you know, it's just the same. Um, but as far as I know, they would be my top three at the moment. Uh, Little Richards Grill. Oh, sorry, again one. The back page in Fibsra. It's unbelievable. So that's the one I did the review with Independence. So they filmed me there, trying it out. Um. But it was like a, a massive one. It's like they had like a really nice pizza there. But I like so many people ask me, and, and that's when I can kind of get it, an idea if it's good. If like 30 people tell me to go somewhere, like it, ha- it has to be good. Like, it can't be bad. Like, surely everyone can't be wrong. But I went there, it was really nice. It had that thick consistency. It was kind of like a tad bit sweet, a uh, good mixture of flavors and blend. Um, and like, you just know when you've had one like that, it's like, you know, this is their own version. It's not bought in, it's not like, you know, from like Tesco or. or or anything like that it's you know homegrown and they do it themselves and um you can really tell they put a lot of thought into it yeah which i really appreciate as well. did you get any place that was n- let's say not good did it happen before yeah it's happened a few times i mean from what i found strangely from making the page is people love two things they love really good reviews or really short reviews there's no in between like people people <laughs> yeah. don't care if i go somewhere and like it's five out of ten they're like but that's not good to me like it's people want to see you like really like go in on one but like i'm also conscious that like you know some of them might be a kind of like a, a smaller place like like i keep try to keep it that i'm just reviewing the garrett dip not the whole establishment because like obviously if you're a food blogger or something they rate the experience they rate the food i'm Everything, just writing yeah. the dip which is the smallest thing in the menu and like you know can be changed but from the worst ones I've had, um, it's just most of them been like really watery or something or like might have been bought in. But there's been a common theme is the like zero calories, zero sugar, zero salt ones. And obviously, like to be honest, I have no idea why anyone is eating garlic <laughs> dip it should be healthy because it's not that healthy it's anyway. Pure oil inside. Yeah, exactly, Come yeah. on. <laughs> um, so I don't know if like enough bodybuilders doing competitions and and they crave garlic dip, they have it, but it doesn't it taste nothing like garlic dip. Like I had one. I gagged, I swear to God, I was tasting glue. I had to pour it down the sink. Like, it was absolutely oh, disgusting. And they've been the work, but I understand that they're not trying to be like good, they're just trying to be healthy. But I was like, but like, surely people aren't buying these because why would you ever want a healthy garlic dip? Like, just, just don't have garlic dip, have, have something else. You know? <laughs> so, they're, they're definitely the worst ones I've had. And obviously, there's been a few other ones um, on the page where like it just doesn't taste nicer, kind of thing. Ah, I think you're gonna try something with you even worse than that. Just two days ago, I was doing um, Aolibo, would be the original name, but uh, basically, in other words, garlic mayo, Yeah. but vegan, made with aquafaba. Aquafaba is the liquid you get from uh, chickpea. Oh, nice. So you emulsify with oil, yeah. as you do like mayonnaise. The only thing I alter, uh, I changed from the original recipe is instead of put salt, I put, put black salt. I put just a tiny pin pinch of black salt to give that hint in the back of sulfur yeah so if I open and let breathe a little and then you're gonna feel a little bit of the sulfur yeah. and the garlic on in it oh yeah yeah I get it. so uh, when when you're doing this if I had to do it in the restaurant I would confit the garlic so mm-hmm. you get a little more sweet and then you put in we get a little more color or put turmeric as well to go yellow look like a meal yeah did I have a try yeah, no, absolutely. Oh my god, no, I a lot of taste. <laughs> Let me try first. I can be honest. <laughs> but it's, it's very different. I've, I've definitely never had a garlic dip like that before. Um, yeah. It's more gentle. That, yeah, I can taste the kind of black salt in there. And. Um, I like it. It, it is thick. I get it. It's not watery. Like the, ma- oh, yeah, the yes. worst thing for me is watery, and when there's no garlic taste, I'm definitely getting garlic in. Oh yes. Because um, some places like it's a garlic dip, and it's just like mayonnaise, and it's like you know there's no garlic. Um, 
Yeah, I can still taste it. I can imagine I can still taste it. I know, it's nice. Happy like, it's nice. I like, like it. here at home, we try to eat uh, plant-based. Yeah. So I learned a lot how to get around. Like, majority of the places, if you get something like that and get watery, is because they didn't emulsify enough. Mm. And then the secret is just like putting a Robocoop or in a blender and blitz the hell of it. If it do not thicken up, just keep adding on very slowly, literally a stream, very thin stream of oil. Yeah. And you keep going, that will emulsify and it will get thick if I put more probably for that quantity 50 ml of uh, oil that would be literally you could turn upside down do like that yeah, and nothing exactly, will happen yeah. Yeah, so it would be very so thick but thick, yeah, yeah. <sighs> I pass guys yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh sweat yeah. no it's nice it's um it's gentle I still, I still get the hint like that's the one thing I'll say like if I can still taste it a couple of minutes after that's how I know yeah. it's good and the vegan ones actually I've had so far I'm really nice like like Hellman's and Heinz, I think, are both had vegan ones. Mm -hmm. And I was like, everyone telling me these are good. And I was like, there's no way it's vegan. It, it has to taste horrible. And they're one of the best. They're one of the best I've had. Like, they taste really nice. Like is, uh, What I see is all about technique. Yeah. I would put, me personally, I would put saffron, mm -hmm. uh, roast, uh, confit garlic, and a little bit more of the black salt. Yeah. Because of the sulfur. But I, here at home, put people off if it tastes, it tastes too much eggy. Yeah, you know, so I try to be a little bit more gentle with that. Mm -hmm. um, nonetheless, that I that's if you're not vegan and you eat that, you will not complain because majority of people, if you go around, so that's vegan. They say, mm, I don't like to use the word vegan to yeah. start w w with. I like to say it's plant based. Yeah. So people feel less bad because I think got the bad connotation of being vegan. Yeah. Uh, and okay. say I'm vegan. Oh. Yeah, people you know, sometimes associate it's vegan, it doesn't taste nice, but like it, do, yes. it does, plenty of vegan stuff that tastes good. Like. Now, I have a question for you regarding uh, what's the, the weirdest request or story you have so far that happened with you with the garlic dip guide? Yeah, I'll say this, on my TikTok, uh, um, which I just made like I'm trying to do more on TikTok because obviously videos are the way to go yeah um, but I got like a 10 kilo book of, of garlic dip that you get in most graves like the things like a bucket of paint like it was <laughs> massive like it's industrial level yeah garlic dip. like didn't even finish it and we were like are we gonna have to eat garlic dip every day you know, my housemates for the next month or two to get through it but um, so I put up a video just showing like how big it was and massive <laughs> and stuff like that but uh, one guy commented and he said um I'd use that as lube. And that, that was the strangest thing I've heard. Um, and I imagine it's not too enjoyable because obviously garlic is strong. And it's probably sensitive in that area, but that was the weirdest thing I ever saw. I put it on my story and I was like, um, that's weird. But I also had someone, actually a few people, and I put this on my story and everyone was, was like, finding it hilarious. And people were telling me that garlic dip and garlic sauce aren't, aren't the same thing. So they said, a dip yeah. and a sauce can't be the same thing. And I was like, so if you gave me a sauce and I put it into a dipping tub, then what is it? And I like, said a sauce. It's like, no, it's a dip because you're dipping into it. I was like, the only difference, because yeah. they're like, oh, well, sauces can be more watery. But I was like, um, like peppercorn sauce, that's not watery, that's thick. Yeah. It's sauce. But like, if you put it into a dipping bowl and you dip your chip, it, it's dip. Like, and people were like, going mad. They're like, no, no, no. Like, uh, sauce would be like you know a, a curry but like you've all had like thick curry or like you go chipper what do you get yeah a curry dip and a curry dip well like why is it called a curry so so people were going mad being like a sauce and dip can't be the same thing and i was like it's literally the exact same thing <laughs> like people remember. don't see the difference yeah yeah no they're like because like if i buy if i buy a bottle of garlic dip i still call it garlic dip but it's obviously like i'm buying the sauce like, yeah but then if you go out to a restaurant <clears throat> And you're like, can I have like, it will say garlic dip and they bring it out to you in the tub. Like then yeah. it's a dip, but like, there's no difference. You can put the, the dip into a bottle and it's a sauce. You can take the sauce out of that, so the bottle put it in, I think it's dip. Like, you know? Why you got 10 kilos tub of garlic mayo? Um, so I, it, it, it's blenders. So like they do yeah. like in, industrial level, like you can get them in most delis. And it's actually a really nice one and it's an Irish brand. But uh, they, they never like told me um to, to get it but like one of my friends in Musgraves and I was like I think that'd be that's, like it's good content like it's the biggest dip you'll ever get is 10 kilos dip so I just yes. said can you can you get me that like and then I put it up like um and it was, it was purely just for that video like I, I think I yeah. got through barely a quarter of it and I had to throw it out because there's no way I was going to finish in time it would have been garlic dip for breakfast lunch dinner every day um, it was lovely but uh, yeah it's so if, weird if there is no cross-contamination I'll tell you those things 
less like for a nuclear war yeah <laughs> they stay there <laughs> yeah the lads are like you, you can start painting the walls with this guy yeah. because it's there so long uh, and it was absolutely huge uh, was any good in the fridge L- lovely yeah really lovely, nice yeah. yeah i gave it an eight um it's nice if, if you had to go to the sh- uh, nowadays do you need to go to the shop and buy garlic dip um that, that was funny so when i when i first started um like all the shops i go to like um i try to go to different ones like you know tesco super Valley, little aldi duns and i just go to the dip section and pick up as many as i could and sometimes i leave it like five or six and like review them all but i think now I've, i've reviewed most of them in the big chains um but now i get told to like go to these niche supermarkets like maybe an asian supermarket or like a portuguese one and like they they sell in the sauce so now it's, it's kind of hard to figure out where to go or i can order some on amazon as well yeah um but i think like i i every time i go to a shop i still check like, <laughs> still, and i'm like is there any what's new, new? <laughs> yeah is there any new dips here or like what's and um sometimes i get some and then they don't make them anymore i'm like oh that or like there's loads of different ones uh, and obviously aiolis and dips but uh, yeah every time i go I, i have to check the sauce section have you been the polish shop no i haven't been oh. I, i'd say they do a nice their one. mayonnaise yeah. is mayonnaise It, if you make home with egg and oil like it's amazing the flavor is very good mm. and we got a garlic one oh amazing really good. very good very good i need to check later with my wife and see exactly the name and take a picture and send to you yeah. you're gonna love it class because i've seen yes. the polish section in some of the shops um and i know they do um some very good stuff like you know some of the pickles and sauces and stuff like that and i was like they definitely and I'd, I'd say someone has messaged me like I've loads of, of DMs being like you have to try out this specific dip in this place it's from you know this country or, or something like that um, and I'd love to try out those ones as well um, and then I say like where you can get it if it's like hard to find and stuff like that too and how was your experience because you went as a, a to judge in the takeaway titans yeah takeaway titans and yeah. and like how was that experience for you um, that, was, that was really cool because um, they were like one of my my friends in the food blogging industry sent it to me and he said they were just looking for people who you know get a lot of takeout and i just said over like listen i run a page i get takeout all the time reviewing garlic dip i was like i'd love to be on um, and i actually had a garlic dip there from dublin pizza company so i got to review that um when i was there i still had to go like do my own individual review because obviously i couldn't have the phone out and um, reviewing it but it was nice i got to try really nice food um from like food trucks it was like um you know dumb pizza company janet's um which i believe they won really nice it was like um like uh, korean chicken i think it was um really lovely and then i got to have like um fish and chips um from i think it was a place down in mead or something but it was just like really niche kind of food mm-hmm. uh, and it was really nice to try it live and like have a say in kind of someone kind of winning the contest and it, and it was cool like it was good fun was good the garlic dip um i don't, I don't think so it's, <laughs> it's, uh, like because it, it's 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 black truffle so but uh it was mm. like it was like gray it kind of looked like, like was fresh truffles um, or uh, just the oil i think i think it was fresh um you know the thing is obviously they're making so many and sending them out like I, i if i go in and order one it's probably going to be much different to the one i got because i had to like film them mm-hmm. and bring them out and stuff um it's no the smell was strong of truffles like that gas kind of smell or it was yeah, it had um had squid ink in it that's what i had in it so all right it's a bit of a different taste um and the texture it just was sort of like a, like gray paint <laughs> it was oh weird so I, it was it was cool because obviously doing something unique um but i think yeah uh, there's definitely better but and it's definitely far worse like but it was <laughs> it's i'd say it's like just above the middle of the pack like, as you know, yeah as i could say and like after that um last year you you got a gift from Domino's. Before I talk about the gift from Domino's, do you like their dip? Um, <laughs> very very controversial opinion, very controversial. Uh like if I I don't really get Domino's anymore and I used to get it all the time when I was in school and college like um and to be honest, if I get pizza, I'm going to get the Domino's great dip because like I'd rather that than the barbecue and dip, but like you know it is very watery like it's it's very drippy it's a little bit ranchy yeah i think the umami uh, uh, what make them good is the umami yeah they have that but it's very ranchy in my opinion it's not much garlic dip what do you think in your yeah i'd, I'd agree i mean it's kind of like it doesn't really give you a thick kind of garlic taste and i it's it's garlic and herb anyway so it's kind of yes. a, a bit different anyway but um it is quite quite watery and like 
the taste doesn't really last. Um, you know, it, it's something it's something different. And to be honest, I know lots of people love it, and I got a lot of hate because I put a review saying like it's not the best. You know, there's better out there, and like maybe it's a case of some people just haven't tried loads of other guys yeah. dips. But I'm obviously not gonna hate people if, if they love it. Like it's still guys dip. I can still understand that people love it. Um, like I'm still gonna get it. But for me, I think there's like better out there. But like oh, it's yes, a mass produced. Yes. so obviously you're not going to get the same attention they're putting into their pizza and things like that um, but yeah they sent out the uh, I actually won a competition strangely enough and so they didn't just send it randomly they just said um, we're giving away garlic dip costumes and I was tagging it by a few of my mates and like like you have to win this is this is for you like it's just yeah, a costume yeah. of you um, so then I just commented and, and I shared it being like like this is my dream come true kind of thing <laughs> and they sent it out to me and it's hilarious. I still have it. It's sitting at home under my bed. It's just a massive foam uh, dip. Like it's. Uh, I don't know what to do with it now. Like I just wear it. But uh, that was hilarious. Like because, like, what are their page or what are their food has like a costume? As like what a great opportunity it was like. Wow, that that's great. And then do you? Uh, what do you intend to do with that dip now? Uh, I have no idea. Like it's just. Um, I'm definitely gonna wear it next Halloween again. <laughs> uh, I was hoping to wear it and work it into into my office. It, it arrived a day after the day of the competition. I was like, I definitely would have won. Um, so I just took a video of me, uh, obviously like wearing it around Dunleary. Yeah. Uh, and I took a video, you know, being like a day in the life of Gary Dip, trying to make it like there's like that really old music video of that milk carton running around like oh sad. yes you know yes i know that one yes and that kind of clicked my head i was like it'd be funny <laughs> if i did that and i took videos of me just walking around and then i was like it's looking really gray outside i was like let's make it sad and say you know it's hard reviewing all these places the job yeah. and that got like ten thousand views and got loads of followers and everyone told me like people i knew and people i didn't know were like that's one of the funniest things i've ever seen and like it was honestly a, a spare the moment thing but uh yeah, I just keep it for future content. As I was saying, that that's great. No, no, that's a good idea. That uh, what they did, I think, like I thought, is so unique that, and then it works very well for your page, and then what do you do? You know, like that's just click well. Yeah. And like, did you have any TNCs a touch with the costume, with Domino's? Um. No, they literally just sent it out to me, and they were like, "Here you go." Um. They said we'd feel bad if we if we didn't give you one so just send it out to me and then they were like do with it what what you will and i was like well i'm obviously gonna have to get a photo up and a video up, yeah uh, with it and um yeah that was it they were just like here you go no free pizza <laughs> uh no free pizza no just to send out a diff. yeah um i was hoping there may be other things in the box <laughs> they just sent me out that because it's it's huge like yeah, it's be vacuum packed because it's so big like oh my god like you can only see my it goes over my knees and yeah. my neck like literally looks like I'm naked in it yeah because I'm just see my shins and yeah. my head um, and yeah it's still sitting there so hopefully I use it again <laughs> what what your family think about it you know like because suddenly it's literally turn your life yeah. you know like and it's something uh, people uh, like people don't realize the power of social media yeah and like normally one day you're there just posting for fun with your friends and then suddenly the follow day you're in the newspaper and the radio and the tv everywhere it's a little surreal that yeah and how your family is coping with that because something like uh, are they going around say you know the garlic dip guide is my son or is <laughs> my cousin or something like that yeah, it, it's, it's a strange one because obviously when I first started, like my mom uh, and my dad, like they've always been so supportive um, and like, you know, she like reacts to every story I put up on, on both pages and she's like, like my number one fan um, and, and saying my, my brothers at the start were like, this this is cringy, like this is this is obviously a joke, like, um, but as it got kind of more, more and more followers, um, like my dad's like, you know, he's a king, like he loves free things, he loves like bargains and coupons, like. So as soon as I started getting free guard dip, he's like so happy. He's like, yeah, he's like, good man, son. He's like, you know, you're getting like free things, getting things sent out to you and stuff. <laughs> um, and then like, he was also asking like, why is my fridge full of garlic dip and stuff like that. <laughs> um, but they, it's funny that like, when they go out to places like, um, or even some of my friends or something, or my brothers, the funniest story, and it never gets old, which people tell me is like, for example, my little brother, um, he was um, getting pizza with his friends. And they're like, oh, we'll just order pizza and uh one of my brother's mates like he told me this he was like one of them was like can we uh surely we get a, a garlic dip with this and he's like yeah and he's like oh we better get a good one and he's like what you mean he's like well like there's this page and my brother was like so i'm saying he's like there's this page and this guy just reviews garlic dips and my brother was like 
yeah that's my brother who does that and he's like no way like you knew me like and uh that, that's the funniest thing like when people uh talk to the people and they like bring like people always say to me they're like geez my friends follow you and they didn't know who you are but i know who you are so i think it's like it's really it shows you how small dublin is at the first of all um but it shows like they've obviously been supported and like anytime they have a good guard dip like anyone i know now they just tell me like you have to try this one or you have to um like people and even my cousins like i get some messages being like hey i was speaking to your cousin at a wedding here he says you you uh, write guard dips you want to try my one like and i'm like how did this even come about <laughs> like, you know <laughs> uh like even my manager works at um his wife and kids are sick of listening to me because he's saying like oh there's a lad in work and, and he writes guard dips. and they're like we know you've told us many times like so it almost becomes like other people's conversation topic um i think that's pretty cool and obviously pretty strange so <laughs> That's great. I I think that's the 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 good part, the good part of mm. uh, happened that now nowadays uh, people can recognize your face and see like Thomas is the garlic dip guide or still like you still kind of like people not recognizing much. Uh, how how is your life now, personal life? Yeah, um, that was a weird one because I thought it was funnier at the start to keep it anonymous. Um, also when I was mostly getting takeouts what was the point of showing my face because I'm sitting at home like do I take a photo holding it I'd always thought the focus was to yeah. be on the dip but not me like it shouldn't be it shouldn't, it's nothing to do with me it's just what the content like mm -hmm. um, but then like from other food bloggers I've been following they've been really successful you know they show their face the odd time like some of them every time some of them like proper influencers they show their day to days um, but most of them just be like here's me you know just kind of make it a bit more personal um, and when I won I'd actually never put up anything like I had uh, an interview with the independent and I made him like cut, cut my face out so I just saw my hands and my shoes and <laughs> could hear my voice and people thought it was hilarious because um, they're like you never know where he or her, he or her is because um, some people thought excuse me they thought I was like a girl or a group of people sometimes people message me and say hey guys like there's like a team of us and I thought it was funny because no one knew and I also didn't want to be get so famous that if I walked in somewhere they'd be like oh here's a guy tip guide let's uh let's give him a different experience because i wanted yeah. to get the same experience that you or anyone else would get because i don't want to be like you know get special treatment because if they know i'm coming in they might change recipe i'm like well then i'm not getting the actual experience that everyone else is getting you know that's why i never tell places before i come in hey i'm popping in unless they say hey let us know when you're coming in we'd love to meet you or something like that i understand that but never be like fyi i'm coming in um but yeah when i won the costume i was like it actually came in a morph suit, a white morph suit to look like this. Um, <laughs> but I couldn't really see what it on and it kind of looked weird as well. Yeah. Because it didn't really fit. And I was like, <clears throat> surely I'll just, I'll just reveal my face at this point. Um, I was doing, kind of doing November. I started growing a mustache in October. So I had like a mustache. It looked really funny. Like, um, and I just said, okay, now is probably a chance to just reveal the face and the costume. Yeah. And them together, that got like a thousand likes and then got loads of views. Um, and from now on, like, like I still the focus on the dip. But like if there's a post with my face in it or something i'm not afraid to to show it but i just felt it, it's um you know weird a lot of people have opinions about about stuff like oh i thought there was more of you i thought you know all this stuff <laughs> like so uh, everyone normally when they see um social media the way i notice uh people inflate what you do and they mm. see because uh, let, let me be honest we will not post in the social media bad hair day uh, especially yeah. me without <laughs> with a lot of hair yeah, yeah. so uh, it's difficult i try to do it mm. because i try to be like vlog as much as i can but my face is what sell let's say in my podcast yeah but in your case it's the deep in in this sense you you, you still have your private life yeah. yeah yeah i still very much have like my private life and private side of things um you know like it's never going to be my main profile like i'm always gonna have like a personal one like in, like it the focus as i said is just on the dip um and like i don't want to make it like my whole entire life like i obviously got other things going on um but i do like that sometimes i can sit there i can post um and i can be like i can let that work away and there's some people that are like so supportive like what i've noticed from the food blog community is like i don't know if you've noticed that as well like even when i had like a hundred followers they're a page with a thousand followers following me and I was like or even restaurants and bar and I'm like why do they even care what I think like I <laughs> I mean nothing to that I could say their dip is the shittest dip in the world and no one's even going to see it like you know yeah. um, but I really appreciate like all the other people I've met through it who have like other food blogs and they've told me like um, you know here's what I've experienced or like here's how to deal with people hating because sometimes you get people being like you don't know what you're talking about or something like that 
um, or like this dip is good and I'm like okay that's fine because like it's personal opinion like obviously um, you know I'm not an, I'm not an ex like I can say like I've, I've had a lot of garlic dip but like uh, like I've never been a chef or anything like that so I can't be like this is exactly what goes into it and um, it's basically my opinion but I'd like to think over the course of having like I think I've had over 200 dips now and from people letting me know that I kind of have like an experience of it now but there's, there's definitely some people messaging me and they're like I've been having garlic dip all my life like I really like your page like, and that's like oh that's cool instead of being like I'm more than you don't know what you're talking about you know they just sometimes you'd be like oh I disagree I kind of like blue cheese in my garden they're like no that's fine I was like no problem like I was like and some people let me know they're like hey they've actually changed this you should come back and, and stuff like that so did you face too many trolls around or not uh, sometimes sometimes you get to be honest most people are really nice Um, you know it, it is weird. like I think if you're if you're messaging a food page to give out like you probably got some issues like some people they, they'd be messaging me weird stuff or like saying you don't know what you're talking about or like i don't agree with that or like who is this lad and i'm like man you're going you're going out of your way to talk to a food guy like i could be a girl for like yeah. obviously my face was real but i was like yeah. before my face was real i was like i could be i could be like you know 15 years old like and someone's beefing with me like i could be a kid i could be like really old it could be a family like um but now to be honest most people are really nice and they're like really love your page it's so funny share this with all my friends and um, love this kind and like when i see people tagging her in the comments or like anytime a news article goes up there like oh I can't believe i didn't think of this or like oh, this page is made for you and people are like oh, i've been following them for you for ages you should follow them. like and um, so to be honest it is overwhelmingly nice because you know i suppose it's not too controversial i'm not really saying anything too controversial like Oh, it's got dip. Yeah. <laughs> what could go wrong? Yeah. That's too watery. <laughs> yeah. You know what I do when I go for uh, restaurant reviews? Yeah. If uh, people follow me, mm -hmm. I got last last week or week before, I was talk with a restaurant and they they said, oh, you should come over and try. I said, definitely, I'm going next week. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm a chef. Yeah. So like now, probably last week, they're panic oh somebody's coming here to criticize that's the, how the guy looks like i did that that before you show the picture to everyone yeah and then you do that and you leave for about like two three weeks you don't do anything yeah. you do not show up people they, they will start to panic and said mm. did he come did he not did somebody saw him or not and then they will relax yeah. and then that's when you come in that's and then mean. you get the reality yeah it's the same new restaurants i was i don't recall with uh, who i was interviewing oh, jesus christ I don't recall now. Normally, I want to open any... Uh, the wingman? I think mm -hmm. so. Uh, when I open any restaurant, I avoid to go in the first three months. Yeah. I do not walk in because I know the first three months will be bang on. will be great. Specifically, mm -hmm. from the week two to one and a half month. After that, the things start to... They start to relax. They start to feel comfortable. They understand what's going on. They get in the routine. Everything starts to fall in. That one you see the real chefs you have there yeah. and the real reality of the food because you could go there the first day and it's amazing the garlic dip is wow. Mm. Three months later you go there, so where's that? Yeah. It's milk in it with exactly. garlic flavor, you know. And would you not see sometimes does that ever work the opposite way? Because sometimes I thought like if a new place opens up, I'm like if I go at the start, it may not be great because it may be trying to get staff. It may be a bit mm -hmm. hectic. They're, they're trying, like some places say, we're testing out the menu, we're testing out new things. And um, so it kind of, as you said, it works by ways as in, at the start, it may be really good or maybe really bad. So you're probably better off mm -hmm. waiting for like th the three months. And um, I'd agree. And sometimes I jump to the gun then, like some place like, hey, we're just hoping you to try it. So I'm like, oh yeah, let me, let me give it a while. Um, and uh, as you said, like places invite me to go out all the time. And I actually just forget, <laughs> like, I, I don't, I don't say, <laughs> hey I'll be there next week because it's all around Dublin and, yeah, and some yeah. not in Dublin some like you know in Cork Galway like all around um, because like obviously I don't want to go somewhere just for a garlic dip like I have to I have to be doing something like I can't be like you know if someone goes go to Belfast for a garlic dip like I have to kind of what else can I do I need to plan so I can't just go yeah. for like you know a chipper and come home like it's like five hours of my day like, <laughs> um, so that that's kind of funny I get the same thing yeah. if he's a sponsor I don't have a problem to go tomorrow there yeah. is, oh, okay I need to uh, check my agenda but like I don't have a problem but I will put in a page is a sponsor yeah you know but like if it's something I'm going spending my money to review uh, no 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 you're yeah. gonna sit and wait until I go there yeah and then I will give my honest feedback um, the sponsor is a different way 
you yeah. know they're paying so i go there i do the tncs and that's it but people who know like i will not rate the same way i rate the restaurants etc you, you comment the first when you open all depend the kind of restaurant you're going a good example was jamie oliver in Dundrum when they opened yeah. they were like sorry my language was shit yeah because they didn't have staff they were more corporative mentality we need to open the rent is high ta, 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 go 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 and push mm -hmm. and then people want to flock in because of the name and then what happened they just you know like dive down mm -hmm. and nobody wants to get in that place to work because it was a nightmare but after three months they start settling in they still with problem with chefs to recruit but the food is okay, you know, like it's decent, mm. you know, like I will not complain. Yeah, I went before and I actually tried to go, I've seen Avatar 2 and Don Drum and like in, I think it was a, was a Sunday, I think it was a, a, a Monday actually, because I had the Monday bank holiday, it was my dad's birthday and I went down and they were booked out and I was actually what? like, I was like, what? And they were like, yeah, do you have a reservation? And I was like, no, I was there with my family and they're like, yeah, we're booked out. For I was like, oh, that's good to see. Like, it's always good. Like. Gordon Ramsay like my biggest fan like in terms of food burger I know a lot of people love Jamie Oliver as well and like I've seen like every episode of Kitchen Nightmares on repeat a million times Chef, Hotel Hell uh, all his shows um, but he always said like a good indication if it's a good restaurant if you go on Monday Tuesday Wednesday and it's busy if it's busy Monday Tuesday Wednesday you know it's amazing but if yeah. they're quiet because everybody's busy the weekends like even the food's crap you just go on the weekend because you're going out with your girlfriend your wife your family you know boyfriend and like that's when people go out and even if yeah. it's bad you're just going to go to do something the weekend but if someone's going out their way on a Monday or Tuesday to go somewhere it's good and that's a kind of good indication and it's kind of a COVID you know you have to book everywhere now and sometimes I do like that because I can just walk in but sometimes I do like especially when you're on holidays um, you just walk in and be like hey can I get a table and you're just like oh let's see what it's like but I do hate getting caught in the tourist trap of let me just walk in and see what it's like and it's terrible and you're like why didn't I look up reviews <laughs> why, didn't yeah, I, yes. you know, why didn't I guess you know yeah, you get a lot of that. And like nowadays, one of the things that I, I, I like a little in, in town, especially, people book two or three restaurants for a group. Yeah. And like that's something pissed me off work in the industry. And they just like you, you don't need to pay for the reservation or anything. Mm. So they do not show yeah. because they go book, let's say, an Indian, a Chinese and a, a casual oh, and diner. They book them off at the same time. Yes, oh, and then cool. let's say we are going together and said, okay, where are you going? Oh, we have these three options. Which one you want to go? Damn, why do you know that? And like? people do that. And like nowadays they start to ask for a credit card and yeah. say, okay, if you do not show up, we're going to deduct 10% per head. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's like 10 or per head. And then you look and say, oh, fuck this. If yeah. it's 60 <laughs> yeah. people, I'm losing 60 euros, yeah. you know? No, no, thank you. So uh, I, I think should go more or less that way. But Gordon Ramsay said everything. Yeah. You know, like if you get the place... Uh, and it's busy uh, like you know like you know when the place is busy uh, you need to have a reservation yeah. you need to re have the reservation and I noticed that with COVID is like obviously remember it went to all reservations oh yes and then like because you had the 90 minutes thing you'd have to book like two or three in a row like places for food and then you have to get food as well yeah so you have to eat. sometimes you're eating when you're full um, yeah I've seen loads of pages and obviously it's upsetting like with um, you know obviously energy crisis a lot of the businesses are closing down but like People booking like a massive party now and not showing up like that just hurts the business so much. Like, oh you yes, need, you need to let them know or like if your business like otherwise like take payment uh, and like it's even have myself like sometimes I try to go out and I booked so I need, you leave a leave a car details and I have to ring them up and be like I'm so sorry I'd love to go like I would go next week but like I actually just can't make it like tomorrow night and I give them as much notice and I'll be like I'll put it on the Gary Tip story and I'll I'll find someone to take my book in and they'll be like no it's fine yeah. so if you if really explain but. If it's more than like six people and you're not yeah. even notifying them, you just yes. like because they bring in like both of my brothers work in the industry. They're both bartenders. Yeah. Like they go, OK, here's the staff for the weekend. You're looking after this party. They, they're paying people to be there. Yes. And you're not there. You know, and so. it's not only that you need to uh, stop to get at that table is not being uh, booked. Yeah. Example, we book a table for 10 people here. Mm. Hour and a half before you arrive, to that table out. need to be empty because mm -hmm. you need to clean you need to organize make sure it's set and go so each table you booked if you put a half an hour gap you're literally putting a robe in your neck if you're the business yeah because if get busy the kitchen got delayed anything you can't go and say look your time's up get out yeah do not exactly. happen it's not like that and especially like say if they don't have like a 10 person table normally they'll be sticking like 
two or four tables together. Correct, yes. So instead of having like four individual bookings during the night, they've just eliminated that for mm-hmm. one massive booking yes. like, and that just ruins everything. Whereas then they'd have to like re-separate them and be like, okay, we have spaces for like two or four because obviously majority of people want table for two. It's always table for two or maybe table for four. Yes. But obviously table for 10 is so rare. Like no one has a table sitting there being like, that's only for 10 people. <laughs> yeah. That's why they, they split them up, you know. As you how, know. how many times you go and you have like, you supposed to have a busy evening and then in the end, like two or three parcels do not show up. Yeah. And then you look and said, okay, I lost all my night uh, trade. What are you going to do now? Mm. And you pay the, the team in the kitchen, the team in the floor, the bar, you know, yeah. like it's, it's money. Exactly. But, Thomas, tell me, uh, what's next now for the, the guide? What do we should be expecting from the Dark Deep Guide? Yeah, um, I, I'm just going to keep reviewing as many as I can. Um, like maybe, like I've been, I reviewed some in like England and, and, and Portugal. Um, and maybe like when I'm abroad, maybe put up like, here's the best place to go for, for garlic dip abroad. But maybe go into different garlic recipes or like, you know, yeah. here's the best garlic recipes or like, you know, Here's how to make your own garlic dip, and I I thought of something hilarious actually. I don't know, like, um, someone sent this to me because there's like this candle selection box, but the way they're all like tea lights, and I look yeah. like a garlic dip selection box. So now I was like, imagine if you did a garlic dip selection box. So I said like, imagine if there's like a kit, like you can get a garlic dip, or like here's like, because you know all these brands like they do like, you know, for loads of Irish abroad, it's like here's the Irish kit, and you got like your Barry's tea and your Taylor yeah. crisps and you know Kerry Gold butter. So imagine if there's like here you love garlic dip. Here's like garlic cloves here's like five different garlic dips here's garlic paste here's garlic aioli here's you know how to make your own <laughs> like just something like that just anything that would like monetize but also make it more interesting Um, yeah like it, I'm very open to to where I can go but I'd say like some merchandise like even like some cheesy tea which like I love garlic dip and people's like they'll buy it just because it's funny like yeah um, and then yeah going to make my own they're, they're the two questions I probably get asked the most as well like what's the future but Wait for some garlic dip, guys. Wait <laughs> for some garlic dip. I hope it's good now. If it's not good, then the page is gone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I bet it will be. It needs to be approved by you first. Yeah, no, that's you. Yeah, the expert opinion on it. Thomas, it was great to have you in. You too, man. A big thank you for the sponsor today. The sponsor today. is Foodcast. Do you want to promote your brand or product in an effective way, direct to our public? Check our website, social media, and all products and services we provide. Contact us for more information. This is Foodcast, where you promote your brand and more. Thomas, how people can reach you and contact you? Yes, yeah, so it's Garlic Dip, uh, Garlic Dip Guide on everything. Um, so it's Garlic Dip Guide on Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. They're my, yeah. my three platforms at the moment. My, Instagram is obviously the most popular. That's where I started. That's where yeah. I have the most content. TikTok, I'm going to try to get more on there. And, and Twitter is mainly so I keep the domain, but I need to get more up in the game. But Instagram is obviously... Uh, the main one and then for whatever social media platforms come down the line (laughs) (laughs) well guys that was the garlic dip guide Thomas here with us thank you for watching or listening don't forget to smash that like follow and share button this is foodcast where you watch or listen to your podcast and more